everybody. I'm Steph. I'm Michael. Today we have our top 10 games that we learned in April 2023. Woo! Yes. So April is one of our busiest months. Uh, last year you learned close to 90 games. Yeah, something, something 90. ridiculous 90 in April. Last year. Thank- this year, not as many. Thankfully this year I only learned 62. That's not thankfully. That's That's beginner numbers. You need, that's rookie numbers. You need to increase. And so do I, because I had what, three, I think three less than you. I was like 57. So, but it was, uh, the the top end was really good. The bottom end, not quite so good, but the top end. We, we played a bunch of games. Top end was pretty fantastic. All, all the games we are going to mention are worth trying and playing. So I liked everything we did play. Um, I, we had, I made sure to play some notable expansions Mm -hmm. this month. So, so yeah, we, we, we knew we would have a lot of games. So we intentionally played a lot of expansions. That's right. So, uh, we have a lot of expansions that need to be played on the review couch. And so we are pulling them from the couch as we, as we can. And this was the perfect month to do that. Yep, so we learned Tapestries. Of oh, it's so good. Futures. Fantasies and Futures. Fantasies and Futures, yep, that was that was Tapestry. And Meadow Downstream was great. We just played on stream, actually. We just played Ares Expedition, Foundations, and uh, Discoveries. Mm-hmm. Those are both great. So, I don't know. And ro- the B-movie expansion for, for roll, roll Camera, movie. that was yeah. really good. And just a bunch. Of, we, we played a bunch of expansions. So that was... A, I think Meadow Downstream made your number one expansion. I love that um, game. It's just... Yes. It's a nice game. It adds a lot of great things. And so hopefully we'll stream it sometime soon. If you are, are watching this on YouTube after the fact, we do stream on Wednesdays and Sundays on Twitch. Twitch.tv backslash board gamer stuff. So be sure to check us out. And we stream... A bunch of games, and we talk about our top tens and everything. Yeah, we do full teaches and playthroughs. So if there are games that you don't know how to play, hey, they're probably uh, in your YouTube collection, yep. uh, which you can also find. Uh, there are a ton of links here, and uh, you can probably find them uh, all pretty easily. Yep. So, um, yep. So uh, what are we at? Like 800 different videos? So, and increasing every week. A lot. So. Play a lot. Yep. So, starting off with my number 10. My number 10 was a difficult choice for me. Actually, my la- my bottom few were really difficult because I had another couple of games that I wanted to squeeze in there. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, this game was your number 10. Um, the one that I'm about to mention uh, was sides from Captain Games? Yeah, we. I actually, I, I was going you back forgot and forth. One. <laughs> you forgot one. Forgot the game, so I forgot a game, so that might have pushed it down. But- sides put it. Sides got pushed down, but we played that at the gathering. Uh, Aldi was playing it a lot. Aldi from BGG, hey, board game geek, uh, was playing it uh, a ton, and we sat in on a couple of games that he ran. Yeah. Um, that he and Lincoln were running. I played and, it three times. Yeah. It's 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 kind of like a just one type of game mm-hmm. where somebody is getting clued in with various like clues. So one word and and then so two people get the clue and they discuss on what they think the answer might be. So it's a party game and a lot of people can come and go and and play. So it was just everyone really else, fun. yeah, everyone else is is gonna uh, going to say well, yeah. We don't know what the word is, but everyone else knows what the word is. And so they're like, I know how to make these two say the word with a six-letter word. Uh, And the six-letter word has to begin with one of the side letters. Like if the, the, and some of the cards will have like two or three letters if the letters are more obscure, like U and I. U's and J's and X's. Things like that. They will be grouped together with other cards but if it's like a t it's going to be by itself usually so i'm like i've got a six letter clue and someone else says i've got a 12 letter clue but it's right on it they can't discuss with each other what the word is um the the game is called sides sides um 
It's it's not From out. Captain Games. Yeah, it's not out yet. It's not out yet. But however, if you like games like So Clover and Just One, this is a game yeah. you will like. You will definitely. Uh, and it it plays. Uh, the reason we say party game is it plays a. It's better if it's played in a group of you know six, eight, ten people. You could play it with four. Yeah. You know, two on the clue team and two on the guessing team. But there's yeah. always just two on the guessing team. Yeah, it's now, fun. It's fun. You can choose to give a letter further in, but you're going to burn cards from the sides if you decide to do that. And the goal is to just make everyone guess as many as possible. Now, let's say after Steph and I are the guessers, then it's going to be me and someone that's sitting over here going around and around till it's someone and Steph that are the guessers. So it's going to rotate around. Anyway. So uh, you want to try and get just, as many correct in as few cards as possible. Without. So yeah. So that is that is one of my honorable mentions. It just missed the list. It just missed the list. And matter of fact, it was on Steph's list and got knocked off. And I'm like, no, no, no. We got to talk about it. I had a lot of fun with it. So. Um, also, uh, another game that I really enjoyed is Sauce Sharf, or mm. otherwise called Pick a Pepper from Amigo. Yeah. Um, it plays a lot like uh, Linko. Yeah. It, it has a lot of those same feelings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where, um, where you're trying to play cards in sets like you do with Linko. Um but also drafting cards. And then when you play cards, you can, uh, you're trying to pick, make the hottest chili sauce. So you're picking peppers for your chili sauce. So you take the peppers, play the peppers in a group and take the chili sauce uh, that corresponds to it. Um, does it fire Linko? I'm not sure it replaces Linko. No, I mean, I Link but some near people, and dear to my heart. Right. But some people will love the, the, Different things that's in addition to the Linko style mechanic will love the drafting aspect or the uh, collecting the sets in order to uh, not try to uh, Linko or a Blux for a Blux in the original yeah, name Blux. of that game. <laughs> you don't have any of that, but you do have a the similar thing where I'm playing a set of cards and I'm going to get the pepper. So it's both more complex and simpler than Linko. So anyway, it's true. Uh, it's we, we played that and then we played Linko immediately following it and it just in my opinion it's night and day like i i love love Linko. yes i'm happy to play one of your Shaffer. favorite quick Fa games or quick card game oh, right is Linko. Yeah, yeah it's Linko. um for sure for sure so but what did make my number 10 okay your number 10 is my no yeah is is a self published game it is not published by a publisher and really ought to be it's a game by chris ray uh, a friend of ours from uh the gathering and it's called magic trick so in magic trick um the person to your right is going to arrange all of your cards for you i am arranging this person's cards over here and i am putting them all face down <laughs> And I'm arranging them from smallest to largest. All the numbers are from zero to seven in what? Five or six different suits? A lot of different suits. I think it's eight suits. suits. A lot of suits. I think it's eight suits. And then we will give them to the player on our left. Then we are going to play these cards into tricks blind. At some point during your playing of your cards, you are required to put one card up your sleeve. That is your magic trick. Uh, it is going to be a card from zero to seven. Basically, you're going to turn that card up, and that is your bid for the number of tricks you are going to take. If you miss it, then you are not going to get any points. If you hit it exactly, it's going to be, it's going to score you good points. So, um, unlike some other uh, bidding games where you have to hit the trick exact. I think yeah. you have uh, like uh, Skull King. I think you have much more control in this than you do in something like Skull King, where the pirates can can uh, make you instantly lose a trick, or some of the like the uh, Kraken can instantly make you lose a trick, and sure. it's super easy to miss by the one you thought. But I love that both the face down aspect and that you know, card up your sleeve 
bid that you do. You can't just bid what you want. You have to bid a card that you have. Now, if you forget to put the, the card up your sleeve, you are going to take your last card, and that is your up the sleeve trick. So um, anyway, I think it is super clever and really deserves uh, to be published. So any publishers out there, go take a look at where, it. where you could get it. Cause, um, Dr. Sign said he missed out on it. Um, I think it might be on game crafter. Oh, is it? So really? I think that's where you can get it, but I'm, I have, I was trying to find it and I can't. Yeah. Look on BGG. I'm not sure. I think it's called game crafter though. So it, if you're interested in, in like different card games this is this is a pretty good one so oh yeah absolutely i i think that this is something that you oh it was on game crafter but sold out oh um dang. Can, so uh i'm sure that chris ray w-r-a-y is active on bgg be sure to you know maybe send him a private message and see what the options are for that because it is a it is a really solid game and on a game where you know there's a lot of just throwaway games that we end up playing at the gathering just to, you know, try you want to play. I want to try games. games. So, and so we just picked this up off the shelf and it was a really pleasant surprise. Yeah, it was really fun. I liked it a lot. It, it was not a, you know, we expect to play a lot of throwaway games. This is not a throwaway game. This was really solid. Yeah, I liked it. Oh, Dr. Zahn tried to buy it yesterday. Wow. Wow. About it like three days ago and he said Game Crafter. Mm. And yeah, so I didn't know that they were going to sell out instantly. <laughs> Maybe so, uh, a copy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, that's my that's the first self-published game that's made my top 10 list ever. Yeah. So it was a solid. It's, it's definitely it's solid. A solid game. Magic Trick by Chris Ray. Yep. All right. My number 10. <laughs> we're, already 10. We're, on, we're on your number 10. Your first game on your list. Yeah, it is. We uh, said Adam. Yeah. Draft and write records. Yeah. This is a new draft and write game. This also was draft, one of the ones that just missed my list. Yeah. I love drafting mechanics in general. So this this was like this scratches your Yeah. Well, not only do you like draft, you are the you were once called the queen of rolling rights. It's true. I do like rolling rights too. Uh but so would it fire something like boomerang? No, I think those they're different spaces, even though they're both draft and write games. Um but this one, you are trying to like form a band and get the money to get going and get all these different. So you can focus on many different things. Do your gig? There's goals to work towards. So you also need to recruit all your band members and trying to get harmonies going on. I mean, there's a lot to think about. It's puzzly. So I like that. Right. So when you draft a card, they've got colors on yeah. four sides. And so you will have to play it in your grid of band members. And when you, when you mark the band member, if you have synergies with the ones on the side, you draw the line with the, with the colored pencil that matches those colors. I think it's really clever how yeah. that works. I like that. But you're also plan you're going to gigs, which give you bonus. To Everyone knows rolling rights are usually all about bonuses. You hit this space, you get a bonus. You hit the next space, you get another bonus. And then those bonuses will give you other bonuses. Yeah. So you've got It's a bonus game. It's definitely one of those. So you've got the gigs area, the band area, the recordings area, the travel. Yeah, the gigs something where you travel. Yeah, there's something else down here where you're also doing things. Anyway, there's also uh, objectives to try to hit. So the first one to hit whatever objective, like get all the ones on the outside of this track and you're going to get a bonus. You claim that and another one pops in. Um, yeah. And that's checked after each hand is completed. Yes. And so it, you can got, possibly match other people as they do it too. So it's nice. It's and got it a lot going people. on. It's really great. Yeah. Um, then, like I say, barely missed my list or else I would talk about it. I was going to say. When it came up. You, I thought it might make your list. It so. almost did make my list. There's so many good ones. I know. Yeah. So True. Draft and Write Records is from uh, Inside, Inside Up, Up Games. Games. Yeah. Play it. Um, what is your thing? Um, Matt says use Draft and Write Records to make your band, then use On Tour to tour the country and get some fame. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that's your number 10. Yep. Yeah. My number nine. My Your number nine. Um, yeah. We started playing this game with Tim from Dice Tower. Yeah. And 
Uh, it's been a long time since I played it, and I was trying to teach it on the fly. And I was like, blink, blink, I don't understand what all is going on um, in this game, but <laughs> Bullet Heart... As a lot going on, I'm thinking you were probably surprised it made my list. I was a little surprised because my teach wasn't great, but the game itself is fantastic. And I think with more plays, you'll probably, it might go up on your it list. It might. It has the potential to go up on your list. So uh, most people, I've already played this a uh, long time ago. I am super late to the Bullet Heart Party from Level 99 Games. Uh, and in this game, you are this, uh, you know, anime type person and yeah you probably don't love the theme that's true no no it's no it's it's fine because it, it's got the same sort of feel as so you've got bullets coming at you in this grid and it sort of reminds me of like a ddr sort of thing yeah a little bit the thing <laughs> where the, the little arrows are coming down but it's really these different bullets coming down of different colors and you're trying to make these patterns of the bullets and if you do boop, some of the bullets will go away when they go away guess where they go they go to your partner. You just put it in front you're of them. You're deflecting them. And the next turn, you're gonna, they're going to put those in their bag. And you're drawing these bullets out of a bag, putting them on your grid, making patterns, boop, sending them to your neighbor. And you do this uh, with asymmetric player powers. And I think that those basically are the heart of the game. Yeah, there's the tons of characters. Asymmetric powers. Jelfia says, I think I saw, I seen you play this like a year ago. And it's true. I mm. did play this solo. Oh, you played it solo. I played it as a solo game. And you can play it cooperatively to beat the, the guy. And it's to beat a bot. Hard. Yeah. Whether it's solo, whether it's cooperative, the game is so hard. And we played it competitively with no bots. We did, yeah, we did. We did, we when when we played it just recently. Yeah, it was c competitively. So. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, so we we ended up playing it, and you killed me. But uh, it was still uh, it, it it redeemed itself uh, pretty well enough to make my top ten. Yeah. And I can't wait to play Bullet Star, which we have. Yeah. Uh, not on the review couch, but in the just, uh, just kitchen just shelves of opportunity. <laughs> what sad is he got to play with Rodney's copy of Bullet Heart, which has the amazing upgraded pieces. And we don't so have the comes with these little really bad punch out tokens. And I'm like, I want these because you're drawing from the back. I want these upgraded tokens. <laughs> and so uh, uh, yeah. my copy is so in in what's the word? Not I'm superior, sure. other in superior. I don't uh, know. It's inferior, inferior to inferior is what I was looking for. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so this is this is so bad. <laughs> so we're definitely gonna have to get those upgraded wooden tokens because they were sold out last I looked, but we gotta look again. I know I gotta and again. I need those tokens. Make sure to check out ah. Bullet Heart from level ninety nine. Definitely. It's just, ooh, Bless me. you. Yeah. All right, my number nine. Number nine. Oh, hey. Dorf Romantic. Dorf Romantic. Uh, um, board game. I guess it's based off of a computer or... Computer game, I think. Computer or video game. But I have sure. not played it. Yeah. Despite all the computer games and video played. games that I play, I have not played Dorf Romantic. So this is a new uh, Legacy-esque... It's not like... It's campaign-esque... Uh, we don't know for sure because we haven't played yeah, more than the first. Didn't. We played two scenarios. We played two out of the very long path of possible opening. You know, you get to open up boxes and get new things discovered. So we've only played it a couple games of it. So this easily could go higher on my list um, because it is a cooperative game with tile placement, trying to puzzle out how you can get these things to line up and, uh, you know, check off goals and stuff. Uh so I think it's 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 an easy game, you know. I would I wouldn't really compare it to my city because my city there's a lot more going on real fast. Like you get a lot more stuff, uh, but it's kind of the same feeling of it's it's easy, but my city gets more complicated. So I don't I don't know how complicated this will get. It I, has, don't know. I think it has the potential to get a lot more complicated. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, and so I think I will like it as it gets more complicated. So, so we met a German guy at the gathering named Nils. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Nils. Uh, he is really likable and really easy to game with. He's good people. So he's he is great. And so uh, we he was 
dying for us to play it with him. We finally said, okay, let's play. And then we play uh, two scenarios. And then he's like, we can play more tomorrow. And we're like, we have to play a ton of other games. Um, <laughs> but that's not because we didn't want to play more. Yeah. We definitely did want to play more of the this game. And I think we need to get uh, a copy from Pegasus and play it here on stream. Matt says it's a $10 game on Steam, and it's worth a lot more than that. You should pick it up. Uh, noted. I will definitely do that. And uh, Alex was talking about Power Wash Simulator. Oh, okay. I need to get that as well. Uh, just talking about that earlier. Nice. Um, but both Matt and Alex say that it's such a great addictive video game. <laughs> so, uh, Well, that's always fun. So definitely something worth checking out. Yeah. Uh, my number eight. Oh, look. It's actually the same as mine. It's your number eight. How about that? And that was not intentional. No. It just, <laughs> it ha just matter happened. of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, un until you shifted your list, this was one level higher on your list and it settled right down next to mine, <laughs> which is let's go to Japan. Let's go to Japan. From AEG. Because there's an exclamation Yeah, but point. I was doing Let's Go to the Mall. Oh, I know. Yeah. But I'm just saying. So, from AEG, we played this also at uh, at Atom 2023. Yeah. And... Uh, Obviously, it's still in prototype because it was just on Kickstarter, if it's not still on Kickstarter. So, we got to try it. Um, had no idea what this game was about when we sat down to play it. <laughs> Super cute. It is. It's really nice. Uh, it's It has a... Drafting mechanic, obviously I like that. And it's a different sort of drafting mechanic because you're like choosing cards, you're choosing cards, these cards go to the next player, they pick them up and add it to their hand, and then you're choosing cards, you choose it has a weird like yeah. flow of cards. That's yeah, my, not the normal. My cards will Yeah. I will it, it's it's only two cards or, or it depends on the, the round. draft. It yeah. depends on the round. I'll take, I'll have two cards. I'll play one. I'll give one. Yeah. Pick up the ones that I have been given. Draw a new one from the deck. Play one, pass one, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But the overall gist of the game is this. You're going to Japan, obviously. Yep. Um, And you are going to uh, have cards that are going to Tokyo or Kyoto. And they are... Definitely different colors. One's like a blue and one is like a pink. Yeah. And so it's clear to tell whether this is a Tokyo feature that you are going to go visit or a Kyoto vi feature that you want to go visit. Right. Um, you are planning a week-long vacation and you, when you play a card, you can play it to any of the locations. Uh, any of the days. Any, you're of, the, at your any of the, days. not locations, but yes, uh, any of the day columns. But you can only have three things on each day. When you place it, it stays there. And when you place another one over it, you're going to cover up something, but you're still going to get the, there are tags that you are trying to collect I love on the tag system. these cards. It's a lot, you know, the tags remind me of like a terraforming Mars, but you're yeah. actually playing them to these positions. Um, and it matters. Yes, because on Monday, you want to see temples. And on Tuesday, you want to go shopping. Or and on Wednesday, you want to do whatever. And these are randomized at the start of the game. Right. Uh, are mine different from yours? I can't remember. No, they they were all the same. Everybody has the same randomization. The same. It could be different than the last game. Correct. And, yeah. Um, so it's not, and you're not always going to temple on Monday. you could be going to temple on a Thursday, for example. Right. Um, but here's the big catch. Um, when you go from Tokyo to Kyoto, you have to have a train token and you can take a normal train, but that causes stress. And you could take a really nice train, but that's going to cost you money. Um, so and Unless you, you don't, need other ways to get these trains, exactly. which there are other ways to get them, but you don't want to willy nilly go from Tokyo to Kyoto to Tokyo to Kyoto to Tokyo. You, you want to, to try to group your Tokyo thing while together. you're there and your you're Kyoto there. exactly. And makes sense, makes this game so cool. Yeah, trying um, to optimize, but all the all the tags you have on day one will carry with you for the rest of the trip. So it is like if you have already played three shopping tags. Then you get this bonus. Yeah. Yay, I love it. Um, so you're and, trying to hit all these bonuses when you can. And then after you have planned your trip, 
you take your trip <laughs> and you do all of your Monday things and your Tuesday things and your Wednesday things. It's so clever. It's like, oh, it's drafting and putting me in, col in columns. No, it's much more than that. I think it is fantastic. It's it's lovely. It's a really nice game. Elegant. It also makes me think they're going to do Let's Go. Let's Go Africa. exclamation point Whatever. to Africa, <laughs> to New York. Yeah, even, or, not, right? Right. Yeah. All the sure. different places. Uh, so that would be easy for them to do. So I, I really like that. I look forward to seeing the final production. And yeah, definitely something I want to look out for. Oh, they're, they are currently talking about Power Wash Simulator. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffy is also playing it. They're like multitasking, playing Power It's got to be relaxing. It's the only reason I can think of why people would be, be playing it so much. I really need to pick it up. So... Already on my number seven. I know. From Rio Grande Games. Uh, so there was a designer who designed this game, Hookie. We played right? it the other day on stream. We played it on stream. And uh, we mentioned about the charity that uh, that uh, he gave this game to before he passed away. Uh, Friends of Asima. And I learned after the, our stream that the names of the kids that are in this game are kids that are there that are actually at this Friends of Asima place. And so it's really cool. Uh, basically, there are uh, letters of the alphabet from A to Z, one card for each. And these are all kids. The A has an A name and the B is a B name. Uh, three of these kids are playing hooky. And so you'll basically take out three cards randomly and put them face down. Um, everyone else has all of the letter cards in their hands. And the basic uh, theme of the game is we are going to ask each other, uh, all of our different opponents, five letter words. Uh, like I will say the word uh, cloud and Steph will say how many of the letters in cloud match the cards in her hands? Because I'm trying to figure out what cards are in her hand and what cards are in Derek's hand and what cards are left mm -hmm. that are playing hooky that nobody has. But that takes a few rounds to do. And so I think that this is a super, super uh, interesting word game. Any five-letter word can be used. Yeah. And so... Yeah, it's really nice. Um, it's a deduction game, obviously, so you want to try and deduce what everybody has. Uh, and so, yeah, you have to ask the right questions. Like, if you know you have the letters T, it's it, it's like Clue. It's, it, well, it's like Clue, but I think much, much more elegant, much more complex. You have to think a lot harder than you do with Clue. With Clue, you just mark things off. With this, you have to decide no, but what, knowing, knowing what, what to word. Ask. No, no, what, what word do I ask yeah. that will, A, tell me uh, a lot about what Steph has, but B, not tell Derek what Steph has? Right. And that's, I think that is the uh, the heart of the game. Yeah, um, super good. And like as uh, Matt just said, playing it on Monday with Game Guildies, which is our other Twitch channel with uh, Derek and Amy. Yeah. So we'll be playing it uh, Monday, tomorrow. tomorrow. So... At uh, 6 p.m. Central on yeah. the Game Guildies channel. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Matt says, it's odd to see a game that should appeal to deduction fans and to word game fans. That's a pretty small list. <laughs> I think it's got some really good crossover, though. Uh, so, and also considering that the proceeds of this game are going to go to that charity. Uh, definitely worth picking up yeah. uh, a game like Hooky. Uh, this barely missed your list. It's it was like eleven or twelve. It's like right there. Right there. So uh, it's one of those uh, honorable mention games yeah, for, for you sure. too. So yeah, we've already played it on stream. That says a lot. Like it really, we I don't put play, them all on stream. <laughs> I want to play it right now. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll get a third person. Absolutely. So check yes. out Hooky from Rio Grande. Yeah. My number seven. It's a game I've not played before. No. Nope. So I have zero comment. It's called City Trip Bruges uh, by City Trip Games. So they have a line of these. Oh, cool. It's a flip and write game where you flip over a card, well, two cards, and they will have 
They're going to be next to each other, and they're going to have basically six different symbols uh, on each. So each card has three symbols. Mm. Or they could be the same symbols. It might be different values or something. And what you're going to do is select uh, two of them to use on the city map. And you are basically walking to attractions, using the features on the cards to visit the attractions, for instance. Like you might use a camera to take a picture of the statue. And so you're collecting these different symbols in the city map grid. Uh, so you're trying to do everything as best you can. There's common goals to work towards, and you're getting points. The more you visit, do one type of thing, the more points you could possibly get. So it's a really, it's a simple roll and write or flip and write kind of game. But it, the map is very big, so you have a lot of options on where to go and how to do it, depending on what flips up, you might not be able to walk very far, so you have to limit yourself to what is out there. Mm. And during the game, you could take negative to, to get extra movement, to get extra symbols, for instance, than the normal two or whatever it is. Uh, so it was just a really nice game, and it's thinky. You try and do everything. So for me, it was, it was a lot of fun. Taking pictures of statues, that sounds like it's right up your alley. As, I mean, as a, these... As the photographer girl, yeah, um, taking all the pictures of all the board games. You might need two cameras to take pictures of the cathedral because it's so big. What? So you have to think about how you can get two cameras to make the big things. You know, it's it all makes sense. Or you could go to the eat at different locations, and yeah. Speaking of cameras, this is a great time to talk about. Oh my god! Steph's off the board gaming calendar, twenty twenty three. If you do not have one, uh, Steph is going to put up the store link in there. Uh, for those of you who might not be who might not be able to see the link, it is stephsshop.equid.com. You can pick up this fantastic calendar with fantastic, I say fantastic a lot on this, board game photography. Um, a lot of people put this up in their game room and it informs their board game playing decisions for the entire month. Um, but... And I'm actually going to lower the price, so I'm going to do that. Because it's already, you know, May. A, quarter, a third of the way through the year. Yeah. But look, there's tons of, of, of months uh, left for this. Um, a lot of people say, well, why do I need a calendar for? I don't use a calendar. I have an electronic calendar to keep track of anything. I actually use this. You said, give it a try. Put it on your office wall. I, I did. I put it up and I actually used it. So, if you love photography and you love board games, I mean, why wouldn't you? That's why you're here. Um, you will love Steph's Awesome Gaming Calendar 2023. Yeah. And, yeah, you do one of these every year, don't you? I do. So, uh, yeah. And the other awesome thing is, uh, in a few years, you can start reusing these um, and reliving past games, right? <laughs> you can use... You For know, sure. maybe Steph's gaming calendar from 2017 <laughs> to uh, to uh, use a on a future year. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> my number six game uh, is from Vital Lacerda. Mm -hmm. well, we played this at Adam. Uh, he taught us uh, how to play House of Fado. From there is no box cover, so I just use my picture from Eagle Griffin Games. Huh. That's my picture of the game. So, Which is still working product. I mean, it's still all prototype, very early prototype. I don't know when it's due. To I mean, it is it is a super rough prototype. I mean, it's like they're getting artwork done. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the, nothing is really finished except the mechanics, which they're still ironing out. But even still, it's no, it's solid. still super solid, and I can yeah. already see how awesome this game is going to be um, when yeah. it is finished. It basically, you are the owner of. Uh, a restaurant in uh, Portugal and you are trying to hire Fado uh, singers and uh, musicians uh, to play music in your restaurant. And though you start out by hiring the, the lesser known singers that don't have a lot of fame and then they will uh, basically get experience and upgrade and you can decide to keep them and get them more experience or you can send them away so that you can earn extra coins 
uh, your restaurant starts off small. You will get you will get to uh, play. It's basically worker placement. You're placing workers to do all these things, to get all of the uh, musicians to uh, get people to come into your restaurant to sit at your tables, eat your food, and eat your food. There, they are. There are different color meeples that are used to say, "Hey, this person will stand and applaud for the singer. This person will stand and applaud for the guitar players." And so, and this is a wild person that will you get to choose who he who he stands up and applauds for, and that's how they earn experience. The basic worker placement mechanism is very similar to what you will see in The Gallerist. So Lacerda has been creating a lot of uh, smaller footprint, smaller box games that basically implement the mechanisms for his larger box games. So that this is basically like, uh, I don't want to say a junior or an easier or a slimmed down version, but it is basically... It is the bite-sized version of the gallerist. Um, Even so, Bot Factory is the bite-sized version of Kanban. Yeah. Um, and so there are a lot of these that are currently uh, published or in development. So this is certain. These it's are new. These, line, so it's really good. Th- this entire line, it's definitely something. So for it, those who don't love the heavy Lacerda games, you might actually enjoy these medium heavy games they're not even that heavy it's just you still are thinking a lot i mean it's not it's not easy but it's but it gives you that little a little bit of it gives you that same feeling yeah. in a in a biter in a scratch it scratches that itch in a smaller uh playtime smaller footprint game yeah um you are not a big fan of the gallerist but you enjoy now safado so Yes, I liked House of Fado because you have three workers. In the Gallers, I believe you only have one that you're moving around that you could get kicked out and get a kickback. This, you have opportunities to leave people in position to get kicked out to get bonuses. And that was your complaint with the Gallers is that with your one worker, if no one took your, if no one I, bumps your worker. It's going to go to the spot and then they did. And then I'm like, well, now I can't do what I wanted to do because I ha- I was counting on you knocking me out. And then. So that happened a lot. Right. Where this Alpha is Fado fixes that. Re- yeah, it fixes that because you have more workers and getting knocked out gives you a good a bonus, but it's not like make or break, like your turn. Like, yeah, it's really good. And I'm just gonna sit there because I have other guys I can move around to get bonuses or to do other actions. And then eventually somebody will go there. You're gonna get bonuses one way or another in that yeah. game. So um if you ever have it was fixed. Yeah, and so definitely worth checking out. If you ever uh, see uh, Vital at a convention or get a chance to play a game with him or learn a game from him, by all means, please do so. He is hilarious. Um, he Good walked, people. He walked by us playing Furnace, and he, he told Steph, he's like, no, this isn't for me. And we're this, like... This game's too hard for me. And we're like, why? He says, it's too hard. It's too complicated. And we're like... What? <laughs> have you seen the games that you have created? I mean, <laughs> I thought it was super funny. complex games. Yeah, it's so funny that he he <laughs> thought Furnace was too hard because he doesn't like the sprawling choices and the complex he, interactions. It's, it's not that complex. complex. His game. If you if you need the optimal play for how to run your factory, then yeah, you're gonna sit there like this. But you know what? Just do everything. Just do it. Just do it. But uh, but his, it's funny because his games are just to me they seem so much more complex. Oh, his games are way 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 way, way, way more. more. But anyway, he's good people. If you get a chance to have an interaction with him, do so. He is super pleasant yeah. uh, to hang around. So uh, definitely check out House of Photo from Eagle Griffin. Yeah. Um, my number six. Six. It is Caldera Park. It was on my short list. Yeah. Just missed. For those who know Savannah Park, this is kind of the follow-up to to that. Um, oh, it's from Deep Print Games and uh, I see that little Pegasus, Pegasus Field logo there. They, that's that's two from Pegasus on your list. Yeah, so it's, it's great. great. Um, 
So Caldera Park, it works similarly to Savannah Park in that you are filling up your board with the animals, trying to get sets of animals in groups. Now they change it because everybody has a lineup of their own animal tiles. And on your turn, you're selecting one of those tiles to play. And you say, you announce, oh, I'm selecting the buffalo. And everybody else has to choose a buffalo from their lineup if they have it. Or they choose whatever they want if they don't. Uh, so I wasn't worried about other people at that point. I was just worried about my board, like what I would want to play. And the other really interesting change of this game is that there are weather tiles. Oh, man. So at the beginning of the game, you have weather tiles that are around your board and you pick one to start and then the other ones go randomly face down and they're all on the edge. They're on the edge and you're going to go clockwise, revealing them basically each round. And then you don't know what it's going to be. And basically those will make animals scare away, animals. Scare, scare away animals or kill animals or whatever you want to say uh, to not count at the end of the game for adjacency to those weather tiles. So you need as many adjacencies as you can get. Yeah, you do. And it's just, it's tough. And then the, the six animal tile is on the outside. It acts as one of the, as uh, the weather tile. So you have to try and make six connections over in like, ah, uh, it's hard. It's really, it's really hard. hard. Normally in like Savannah park, you have that one tile with the lake and all the animals around it. And that's just going to go somewhere in the middle to try and get as m many connections as possible. But this one's on the outer edge. And you're just um, basically trying to get animals times lakes. Yeah, basically you have to work where you know the weather is because you're like, I don't know if that weather's going to be a problem later. So you right, because you're not going to get all of them. One's going to be uh, some of them are going to be left out. I think mm -hmm. two maybe. But there's one that uh, that will scare away groups of three animals and some that will scare goats and whatever uh, elephants or whatever. Yeah. Um so but they'll only still only scare certain groupings of animals or certain types of animals. Right. Uh, so basically on my turn, I select that buffalo tile, but I also have to select a terrain it's going in. So those terrains are getting less and less options as people are selecting them. So there might only be a river left. And so I have to place it on the river. So you're trying to like. So it's not like, hey, yeah. here's a tile. Everyone use this tile. And right. Also, you must place it in this in terrain this that I have chosen. Area. And then. Uh, because I need them in the desert. I know she the, needs them in the mountains. She doesn't want to place it in the mountains. Oh, my God. She has to place it. So rude. In the mountains. <laughs> so. Yeah. And you get bonus points if you fill up regions uh, in your map and different, like, um, attractions, like the, what are they, crevices? I don't know. In the calderas? The can't, is that what a caldera is? I don't it's, it's one of the volcano the, things, right? Okay. It's a caldera. Yeah. Ooh, I didn't know that. That's, like, the name of the game. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, a caldera is the, 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 you know, it's it's like a, a crater of some sort. This okay. is also a volcanic caldera. So, yeah. In any case, I think this is a great game. Do you need both this and Savannah Park? I say yes. I like them both a lot. Mm. Uh, I, I think Savannah Park is severely underlooked. So Savannah think, Park has sat there on the two stream couch for a while. So we need to stream it. I know. I was waiting for people to actually get it. So hopefully mm. people have gotten it so they could play along. But it's, it's weird. It's a game that people can play along with. It's weird because Caldera Park is uh, Pegasus, uh, at least by this thing. And Savannah Park over there is Capstone. Capstone. Yeah, it's because it didn't do well for Capstone. Oh, that's but, weird. Because it, it's gone underlooked. And I think it needs it, it needs did more love when it, it came out. Love. And and I want people to love it because I do love Savannah Park. I think and I love I do love Caldera Park. I think I love Caldera a little bit more There's than Savannah. A little bit more strategy. Yeah. But but if you're looking for like a lighter experience for new gamers or family. Savannah definitely hits that. I definitely. So I think there's room for both, in my opinion. I love both of them, and I want both of them to get love. So that's why I put it on my list. I really like it. Yeah, and I mean, it's not a low number on your list of a of a month where you played over over sixty it's, games. It rates number six. It's a really good game, and it's worth talking about yeah. for me. I really like it. So my number five is not going to be on Steph's list because uh, she talked about it, it already earlier this year. Right. When did I learn? I think it was February's list. I did. I looked. You looked. It was February. I looked and made sure. 
Um, this is my second title from AEG nice. this month. That's true. Um, because I we did the Let's Go to Japan. This one is already out, and it is Ready, Set, Bet. Yeah. And with the app, it's even more fantastic. Yeah. As um, so in Ready, Set, Bet, you are basically placing real time bets onto this betting uh display. I guess you should you could say, um, and Meanwhile, someone is rolling the dice, but it's even better if the app rolls the dice for you and actually calls out the numbers. And as the app will call out the numbers, you are placing your bets on the spot, locking those numbers out and those bet positions out from all the other people at the table uh, as time goes. And the horses are going to go around. Uh, the dice rolling and horses moving works a lot like other games that you will recognize, like Can't Stop or Mother Road Route 66 or any of those other ones where the 7 is going to get rolled a lot more than the 2, 3, 11, 12s are going to get rolled. Uh, so if you're going to bet on a uh, 2, 3, the 2, it's like a the 2 and 3 horse moves on 2 and three, then there's a four, a five, a six, a seven. So if you're going to bet on the two, three horse, it probably needs to have moved a little bit for you to have any chance of it winning. However, in our game, I think one of those extreme horses did actually win over the seven horse. It's pretty awesome. And the paths for those uh, are a lot bigger than the seven <laughs> horse, sure. as you might expect it's from odds dice well. odds. So. Yeah. Um, once the horses get past a certain point, no more bets, and you're just going to sit there and wait mm -hmm. on your horse to win, and you're really hoping that those numbers get yeah. rolled. Uh, between rounds, you are going to get a, what is it called, a, a VIP card? Yeah, like and the, a bonus. Uh, it, yeah, it, it, it grants you an additional bonus. I think it's draw two, pick one. Yeah. Uh, mine, for example, will that gave me a dollar every time... The two or three, oh no, uh, snake eyes or box cars were rolled. Yeah. And I was listening for him to go, say snake eyes or box cars. And I, I'd grab a dollar from the, <laughs> from the, from the till. Um, and everyone does this in real time. Um, it's got a little bit of chaos to it, but it's also got the, for the people who love math, it's got those statistical odds of, do can I count on the ten to beat the seven? Do I need to uh, bet for this to uh, place or show versus a win? And so you're really mathing this out in your head, but it happened. It's happening in real time. Totally worth picking. I knew up. we had to play it because I knew you were gonna enjoy yeah. it. And we played it in a big group of like eight people, yeah, and it was like super, uh, it was a super awesome experience for a first time. And we did have the app. Highly recommend. Uh, we need to get this game. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, ready, set, bet from? I knew it would make your list. AEG. Yeah. Okay, my number five. I have not played yet. How did I miss playing this? You played it one morning. One morning. That uh, I am not a morning person, let's just say. Forever. And you are much more clever than I am because I was asleep. From, from Schmidt Spiel. Yeah, and probably Stronghold in the near future because they've been doing all those. They've been doing all of them. Uh, so, yeah, it's obviously a game in the Ganshan Clever series. This is the fourth one. Can you tell? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I really like it. I mean, I like the series. I think they get... Two was your favorite for the longest time. Two is still my favorite, and mm. then probably four, mm. and then one, then three. I That's think. a really good recommendation then because one got you hooked. If four is better than one... One for me was good, but two was really good. Oh, yeah. And then this one is really good because it has it adds like a Tetris mechanic for one of the dice. And you're trying to like puzzle in these different uh, areas. Uh, there's a... Basically, it's more of it's more of the same stuff. So if you if you like the game... In general, you'll like this one. It adds new it adds new areas for every region, but it's it's you're doing the same thing. You're drafting the dice, you're using the blue and the white together, etc. You're the so same ways as it, in the other clever games. Mechanics. None of that changes, just what you're doing in each of the areas, which changes it up. And so, yeah, 
and it changes it up in ways so that Keeps they, it interesting. they don't fire each other. Right. It's just, hey, More which one stuff. of these do you want to play? Yep, exactly. And you know what? I More really goodness. liked it. Yeah. So, I mean, why only get one? Get the whole set. Get the whole clever set. Clever forever from I like Roland Schmitzville. Schmitzville. I mean, so two Roland Rights out of your top ten, right? I mean, they don't call you the queen of Roland Rights for nothing. I guess not. Well, there's another one maybe later. Oh. <laughs> Spoilers. Maybe. Three out of your top ten. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, My number four game was one you played in January and yeah. made your top ten. You're like, oh, yeah, Michael, you're going to love this. Yeah. I got to play it, play it at the gathering. From Hans and Gluck, it is... Mists over Carcassonne. Yeah. So this is a the co-op version of Carcassonne. If you, do you love Carcassonne? Do you love co-ops? Play Mist over Carcassonne. That's pretty much all the recommendation I should need to give anybody who loves Carcassonne. And there's and different levels in this one. Yes. So you can play it easier, and then you can keep adding more modules to make it more complicated. Right. Where uh, basically. Uh, ghosts will appear and you have to surround these ghosts and and, uh, and do certain things to make the ghosts go away. And if you don't make the ghosts go away, everybody loses because the ghosts, the ghosts scare everybody away. Right. So don't run out of those. And uh, other than that, it works like Carcassonne does. You're trying to earn a certain number of points to beat the level. And like Steph said, the difficulty levels will basically indicate how many victory points you need to beat this level. And if you score enough points by ending roads, closing cities, uh, enclosing the monasteries, things like that, like you do in normal Carcassonne, if you can do that, then uh, you can win. But don't let the ghosts overwhelm you. Oh, they're going to overwhelm me. Uh, and then we lost. We lost big time. We lost. My first game the other month, we lost. And then we played again. <laughs> so you really, it's a learning curve. It really is. <laughs> and so, you just have a bad tile draft with just all the ghosts. Yes. So you could have that. But yeah, this it's good. You it's played it. Yeah. If you super lose. fun, super solid. If you, like I say, uh, it's really that, nice. That should be all the recommendation. Carcassonne plus co-op. Get it. Yeah. Your number four. My number four is actually one we just talked about. What? What? Oh, it's a little. Hold on. It's going to mess me up. Yeah. So remember the time that we that we said that uh, you were not a huge fan of the gallerist and you loved this? This is the game that you loved for number four. House of Fado. I, I really liked this. Uh yeah, number four in a really crowded month. Yeah, and really I really good. You had it going on in our game. I was like, you're getting all these stars. I was like, come on. I thought I was doing really well. Uh, so stars are victory points, and you get those by leveling up yeah. your performers and completing your restaurant. My stars uh, on the billboards, getting the victory points at the end of the game because there's a little bit of area control in different mm -hmm. areas that people aren't doing. So I knew I was going to get a whole bunch of end of game points. So there's definitely different strategies to pursue in this game. And y'all almost caught up. Yeah. and it, But it's not too many ways. There's not too many things to do, but there's still a lot of different ways to score. I like that the, the game is in a race to get five stars or whatever. There is a scoring that happens. There's ways to get points in the game. That makes the difference for me. It's not a race to do it's something. It's not a race to those. You get points once the game ends. However, and I you, like that. Yeah, it does end when so many stars have been collected. Right. right. But that is not the end all be all. Right. So and that's what I like. So I think. And that was a good decision for me and my style. Because of Because you don't like race to race to X points. Right. Exactly. Right. So uh, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of strategies to play in this and uh, keep your dice. Sell your dice. What do you do? I don't know. It's a good. Seems to be right. I don't know. It's yeah. Good. Oh, it's dice worker placement. Uh, well, no, it's yeah. worker placement, but you also have the dice. That, the, that that represent the musicians and leveling right. up their talents as they go throughout the game. And once you close the store at, at the night, you get the choice of keeping them for the next night, or you could send them to the streets and get, you know, a payout for it. Right. So it's one so of they go from level one to level six. Once they're level six, boom, you get one of the stars. Yeah. When you max out your restaurant, 
you get a star. But once they go back to the streets and they're higher levels, they're more sought after. It costs more to re- re- recruit them back. So you're like, well, yeah. It, <laughs> Money's tight. Money's super tight. <laughs> interesting decisions are what get what drive games. So. Exactly. so there's a lot of those, a lot of those interesting decisions in this game. So. Yeah. I forgot to mention that we played this with OFPG. Yeah. Uh, which is our friendly plays games, Mick yeah. and Starla. So um, fun. We really enjoyed playing games with them. Yeah. And uh, this was one that we played with them. They, yeah. They made the game even better. For sure. Playing with friends. For sure. Uh, so, yeah. My number three, we've already talked about. So, the, hey, it's going to make that a little bit easier. Yep. Dwarf Romantic, the board game from Pegasus Spiel. Um, again, I uh, loved playing this with Neil, with Nils. Yes. Uh, would definitely play it again. Looking forward to uh, checking out the computer version of this. But, hey, I can't wait till we get the board game and play it for you guys Uh on stream. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, if you love co-op and you love tile placement, hey, sort of like Carcassonne, right? But these are hexes and not square tiles. Yeah, Um, which is also fun. I like hexes, too. Oh, I I actually prefer hexes. Yeah. And you're just trying to make some of those similar sort of features where you're trying to connect the cities together together. You don't want too many, but you don't want too few, and you want to try to do it at the right time. I just, I love, it It doesn't copy what other games like that do. Right. Like, it doesn't try to copy Carcassonne. It It is its own thing. Right. And so I, I, I like that. Um, I, I'm interested to see what the next levels bring and what sort of new challenges that come in there. So be sure to check out Dwarf Romantic. Yep. My number three is actually your number two. What? I know. So we can talk about it. So we had this game in our shopping cart because this company is out of business. Therefore, the game is out of print. We played it at the gathering because uh, I don't know why we didn't get it in the cart at the time. I think it was like, oh, hey, we have to get a certain. We have this much to, that we can spend. Let's go ahead and check out. Maybe it went out of uh, it went out of stock. I just don't remember. But we played Encyclopedia, and both of us loved it. My number two, your number three. Yep, my number three. Your um, number two. I didn't think you liked this as much as I did. I liked it. It was long. I think it will go smoother and faster the second time. Absolutely. So I think it. Our, our game was long just because we were learning from the rules and we had new players too. It was just managing everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but otherwise, I think the game has a lot going on for it. Um, right. Now, this is true dice and worker it's placement. Beautiful. You roll the dice and you will place these workers on spots on the board. Um, basically, trying to, um, it's basically uh, you are trying to. I don't know if you're trying to develop an encyclopedia, but there are certain things where you are trying to recruit uh, leaders or researchers or teachers or whatever it is. And you are uh, doing research and then I think you're doing research on animals and then trying to publish it. You're trying to you you select the animal you want to that you want to research you travel to the location to study that animal and then you publish your findings in a journal and that will give you all of these encyclopedia points i i I love how you have to work this through sometimes you have the dice to do what you want sometimes you don't well Um, you can also draft other people's dice and that will give them a small bonus generally yes so that's, yeah that's interesting because you're play you roll the dice and you place them on your board uh, certain colors are for certain regions or for certain animals or whatever. And oh, I see. Uh, I want Steph, your purple you, die. You've got that purple die. You've got that yellow die. And I'm going to take it. And one spot gives you no bonus. One spot will give you two coins. One spot will give you three two. points. Reputation. Uh, yeah. One will give you reputation. But you need these certain things yeah. to uh, to fulfill the actions. So, yeah. um it's a really nice euro, I think. Yeah. So. And now we have it because we ended up buying it. We we uh, amazingly someone had it for sale at the 
at the flea market bazaar, uh, and we instantly picked it up. So thankfully, <laughs> um, we didn't get stuck and uh, without being able to acquire this game. Yeah, uh, it was definitely one that I'm like, yep, this I think is a keeper. We need to acquire it, and then two days later, we got it. Yeah, and it worked out because. What we got was the Kickstarter edition too. So yes, it's all the the nice biddies. Yeah, we don't have to just buy the retail edition. <laughs> we definitely wanted all the all the good bits. Yeah, why not? Right? It's a nice game. My number two, your number three from Holy Grail Games, Encyclopedia. Yep. Your number two. My number two. We've talked about this uh, because this is one that uh, <laughs> you forgot to put in your app. Yeah, I forgot. We we I forgot to log my play, therefore I forgot about Cannot it. Cannot believe it rated this high a non-published game. Magic trick. Wow. It was it was your number 10. My number 10. I love this game. Your number two. Yeah, I really loved it. A game you forgot to put on your app. I wouldn't have forgot it when I was writing up my new to me because I'm like, because I go through all my pictures. Because you were going through and, and so I would have remembered in my new to me because I have the picture and you're like, busy you're busy crafting it. that new to me yeah i'm currently making it so <laughs> uh but yes this game i like not knowing what cards you have but i there's also a deduction element because i know what i've an saw. idea i know what i saw in your hand and if you have the seven yellow and i have a my highest card is a yellow that means my highest card is a six yellow at, yes, most. at most so you have no so seven I know that i have no sevens that so I like knowing that little bit of information, and that helps me. Oh, he's got a high card. He's got his lowest card is over here. I can figure out. Okay, well, I know that's probably a one. Therefore, mine's probably a two or a three. And you kind of get information based on what you do know and what how the cards are lined up. If so, two oranges next to each other, well, they're not the same number. Okay, well, maybe rearrange cards differently when passing them to people so they don't have duplicates next to each other. Now, if we're sitting like this, Steph has perfect information about my hand. Though I don't think that that changes things too much, you just knowing what I have. Because there's, you know, four or five people, whatever, sitting at the table. Right. What I really love about this game is the look on someone's face. When they take a card from the middle of their stack, they flip it over and they go, oh, that's a five. All of this stuff is is <laughs> lower than a five, is, or no, is well, five is already a fairly high card. True. And if they're doing this from the middle, all these are sixes and sevens, and you didn't want to take any tricks. No, you're taking some tricks now, yeah, buddy. For sure. um, <laughs> <laughs> that just a look on their face when they draw a card, or they drew a three in the middle, and then the next card next to it is a six, and they were not expecting it. I think that is fantastic. And you're like, <laughs> you didn't think you had that. <laughs> so, yeah, like yeah. one hand I saw, like he had four sevens, and then the other guy had the other colors that are high. And mm -hmm. then he pulled out a seven. I'm like, well, that means I got no seven. I got and I got the low stuff. They're going to take it. So, I'm going to, I'm going to magic trick a zero. <laughs> and it's figuring out which card you want to use to say how many tricks you're taking. Cause you're trying to, you have to pull a card that tells how many tricks you're taking. Well, I think I'm going to take two. So I need to figure out which one of these is a two or a one or three. And you're like, okay, but you also want to take that many colors to get the bonus. So yeah. it's like, how do you know this? Sure, I get only two colors and two tricks. I don't think I made this clear before, but when you're face down, you can see the suits. Yeah. You see the on suits the on the back. So you, you don't see the numbers. Yeah. That that's, it's fun. And and the other wrinkle in it, red hearts are always Trump. So <laughs> <Yes>. when <laughs> when you've got red hearts in your hand, am I going to take with those? Am I going to be able to slough off, you know, behind another heart? Yeah. What, am I going to be able to get out of taking some of these tricks? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really good. A lot of good strategy. Um. Just talking about it, I want to get a copy too. So, I think Chris is gonna hook us up. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. So, in any case, well, I mean, he should. It made I, your number two game of the month. If anything, I hope he adds the game to like drive-through cards where people can print on demand. If 
you know, if he can manage that. If there's no other way to get the game, I hope it can come some other way. Because, right. or if some publisher picks it up, because it's it's different. It's different. It's really interesting. It's I really it's like unique. It. Dan's like, I should try this. Yeah, apparently it's uh, sold out since you told me, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. Uh, magic trick from Chris Ray. Do it. Play it. My number one came at me out of nowhere. I had... No, oh, thanks for going in and putting it right there. I can't even lead up to it. I clicked mine. I was clicking. You clicked... You accidentally clicked, clicked mine? Yeah. Sorry. It's Station Fall from... Lead up. Station Fall from Ion Game Design. I had no... ta -da! I had no idea that this game even existed. Everyone who knows me knows that I... Love, 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 love hidden role games. I knew it existed because I got asked to play. I had no idea at Granite Games. How did I not know? It, it must have come out right at Granite Games because everybody's playing it. But I didn't and, even know it was on Kickstarter. Well, I know, and I'm like, I know this is a game Michael's gonna love. So when Jeff was walking by with it, I'm like, Jeff, do you have room for us? I know we should play this game. And it was nearing the end of the con. I'm like, Michael, you need to play this game because I know it's one you're gonna love. And, and I, I was, was like, not wrong. I was like. Uh, I've never heard of it. What is it? And lo and behold, this game is fantastic. Yep. Um, I feel about this the way I felt about Nemesis when I first played Nemesis. Uh, and that one made my game of the year two years ago. Um, this game makes me feel the same way. Basically, you are on a space station that is crashing to Earth. And you have exactly, uh, approximately, unsure exactly how long, but you have about 12 minutes. So you have 12, maybe 13 turns in order to get off of the space station. So, but here's the catch. You don't know who any of the players are at the table. There's like 14 different characters on this station in like a five or six player game. You have two roles in your hand. One of them you will choose to be you and the other one you will choose to either be your buddy or your grudge. Uh, and you can't choose whether they're buddy or grudge. Uh, the card, the card itself will actually say on there, you want this person to also escape or you want this person to be killed on the station. How do you do that? You go around and you whack them in the head with a wrench and make them burn up in the station. Um, so that's pretty cool. The, the other major twist is this. Anybody can move any character on the station, not just the one who you are. You are a hidden role until you decide to reveal it. Now, here's the basic mechanism. You've got those roles on your station. Let's say I want to move the station chief. I will place my action token on the station chief, and then I can I can do two actions. All right, that's great. I do two actions, moving and then picking up a wrench, for example. Um, if Steph wants to move the station chief, then she, if she is taking control of that, I already have my action token there. You only get one action with the station chief. But wait, what if I decide to reveal as the station chief? Steph can no longer move the station chief. So that is, I think that's the awesome thing about the game is that if I reveal as the station chief, no one else can move it, but you know what I am trying to okay. accomplish. Okay. Now you can stop me. Now you can actively send other characters to come attack me yep. or to make sure that I don't get what I want. You know, they can knock my station chief out, drag me to an escape uh, module and make me go to <laughs> Earth. The station chief, his goal is to make sure everyone else gets out to Earth. But station chief stays on the station. <laughs> I love it. I love the different asymmetric player powers. I love the asymmetric goals. I love the hidden role aspect of it. I love that you can choose any character on the station to move. I love the action selection mechanic. It's fantastic. I can't say enough about it. Station Fall is epic. 
and like he oh. says and everybody dies and everybody and then everyone dies <laughs> it's the just Shakespeare <laughs> It, it, and it actually is like a comedy and a tragedy. I love the negotiation aspects because there's a way that you can bribe somebody with victory points to have them do what you want them to do. Um, I there are there are tokens on the board that can be used um, to basically force someone else to take an action because you've got dirt on them because it's little personnel files with some uh with some information that they don't want to get out and basically they don't tell you what that is but basically it's like oh i can move i'm moving the botanist one space or i'm making the botanist hit them on the head with the, with a wrench um and they have to do it because you have that dirt on them um and there's a ton of characters. There's a there are a lot of different characters. And you're not going to use them all each game, so it's, it's... screaming for expansions because it's so good. Um, you have the, just a lot of good feedback from a lot of different gamers. I, I I've I've heard it like yeah. a lot recently. The one thing I think that could be improved is the scoring system. Uh, because you get two points for this and one point for this and three points for this. And eventually people will end up winning 12 to 11 to 10 to eight. Um, and the, 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 the scores all bunch. Yeah. The <laughs> scores will all bunch up together like that. And it's, you know, it's like, it, it doesn't completely leave me fulfilled, but the rest of it is just so fantastic. I'm sure I'm sure that little things like that will be ironed out with expansions or with fan-made variants, much like Battlestar greatly improved with expansions. And Battlestar is my favorite game, but I won't play base game anymore. So I think that any sort of shortcomings with Station Fall can easily be ironed out. I think that so far, this is my game of the year. Uh, that other games are going to have to try to knock off that hill. Well, I knew you were going to love it. Uh, you you so were, I was not you were wrong. so right. I was not wrong. Station Fall from <laughs> Ion Games Design. Yay! I'm glad we could play oh, it. Oh, Dan says some of the characters just seem to score less also. So I I think that can be improved. Yeah. Uh, but but it doesn't take away from the enjoyment of the game. There was one guy that I'd never met before. His name is Larry. Uh, we friended each other instantly after the game. Um, is like Larry's character was right where I needed someone to be. And I'm like, Larry, what does your character need? He's like, and he was quiet the whole game. Yeah, he, he didn't, was he didn't super quiet. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you need? He said, I don't know. I, I don't, I, what do you need? I don't understand. And I'm like, I can help you. If you will help me. He's like, well, what do you need? I was like, I want to get you out the station. He says, I want to get out the station. I'm like, let's work together. <laughs> <laughs> and little things like that. It's like just the negotiation aspect. Love it. Anyway, game of the year. I'm glad we could play with Jeff because Jeff is Jeff is a pioneer of this game. He loves it. He yes. loves, he's, he's all over the forums. He's, so you'll probably if you're in the forums, you'll probably see Jeff show up. Jeff Spear. So Jeff yeah. Spear, yeah. Fantastic so, guy. It's really good playing Love with Jeff. someone who knows and loves the game already. It yes. makes the experience better. Well, that's what I try to do when I play Battlestar. The... So learn Battlestar. It, it didn't make my Battlestar did fun. not make your list. It did. Let's go ahead and get that out into the open. Battlestar did not make your top 10. It probably didn't make your top 30. It's a solid 7 for you. Something like that. I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Whatever. But I'm, I'm not good at I'm, I don't like how it makes me feel. I don't like lying. I don't like getting backstabbed. I don't like that. And it's also why Station Wall didn't make your list because... There's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. And I'm happy to play them mm -hmm. on no, Quest by Michael. It's right up my alley. It's, I know it's right on your alley, but and, it's not right up my and alley. It's and <laughs> it's one of the few differences we've got with games is that this is what I, I we both love euros we both love tile placement we both love co-ops this is where we totally differ is hidden roll games always play feast for odin you will always play battlestar uh, but that's just here's the here's the difference i will also 
often play Feast for Odin. Oh, you yeah, won't. I will. I will. It's just long and there's other games to be played. And um, that's what I think about Battlestar. It's just long and there are other games to be played. So there, yes. there you go. Is but that I, that's it. But I will seek out playing Feast for Odin. You will never seek out Battlestar. Let's just be I just honest. honestly don't think you would ever seek out playing Feast for Odin. Yes, I would. I think you'll oblige yes. my playing no, it sometimes. That you uh, you severely underestimate my thoughts on Feast for Odin, which for me is an eight or a nine, and Battlestar for you is a seven. Okay, that's maybe Feast for Odin was the wrong example, but yes. the idea is I the same. I do not know one of your nines or tens that I say, eh, that's a six. <laughs> not one. Not. One, not one game. We we did take up the whole night playing Battlestar. This is true. Worth it. Worth it. My number one. Can we talk about it? Uh, absolutely. But I haven't played it, so you can talk about it. I can't talk about I'll it. Talk about hey, it. how about the third rolling right in your top mm -hmm. ten from Blue Orange Games? It is Next Station Tokyo. No, we cannot talk about you, number one. <laughs> Shelby has said it. We cannot talk about it. Well, you can talk about it. Okay, this is what happened. What happened, Coach? Dur during the gathering, I was in a Next Station London tournament on BGA. and Not at the gathering. Not at BGA at while she was at the gathering. BGA. I was in a tournament with the Defoobs and Twin and, and Jelfia. Everybody was there. Uh, and we played it. As soon as we were like done with that, I got invited to this mysterious next station Tokyo game. What? Because it showed up in alpha mode on BGA. Mm. Oh my god, I love it so much. It's very, very, very different from Next Station London. It blew your mind. It blew my mind. And I still have no idea how to play this game well. Uh, I mean, you're really, really good at Next Station London. Really good at Next Station London. Yeah. I, I, good job, you. Good job, me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get good at Tokyo. I'm trying to get good. T G U D. Get, get good. I mean, so when you play against the top at Next Station London, which you used to be the top, I was, but now I, you're like winning five out of twelve games. Well, I any chance I can, I join the tournaments for Next Station London with the high ranked uh, people. You used to be the high ranked people. No, no, that was really, 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 yeah. Well, that that too. I love that game too, uh, but Tokyo has a new board obviously and it has an inner a, a ring in the middle that's a green pencil already filled in so you're basically working with five colors possibly and the green is already there so you're still doing the four colors mm -hmm. and you're trying to get to these different areas if you make a connection with two lines <laughs> in the outer regions you get a bonus five points. And if you make it in the corners, which is really hard to do with a different color, you get bonus 10 points. Mm. But there's other things to work on. So you need to make the connections to the green to get rid of the negative because you start with negative points on it for the green line. So you have to make the connections to the green and you have your different common goals to work towards to get those extra bonus points. But it's really hard to maneuver around this board. There's also the wilds, you know, the wild symbols for next station London. Mm-hmm. You, you can try to get a bunch of uh, the, or uh, you meant all the cards. The cards you flip right. over. So there's the wild. You can go anywhere you want. Yeah. The, yeah. This time it has that, but you can also travel along a line. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because you can cr you can double root something, and you're like, well, where do I double root it? Do I go along the green to get to the next green location, or do I go do somewhere you have else? To leaf the station. Oh, I don't know. There's just you said root. There's a lot to think about. And you mean route? The green line is like the the main line everyone wants to use. It's just it's it's really well done. And I'm really interested in this game. What? It's it's called a route. So stop making fun of me. <laughs> Next station London. We had a big discussion about this before the stream even started. <laughs> Expansion London was one of my favorite games from last year. It was in the top. It was in your top not ten. Five. I think. I, it was definitely up there, and it's a game I will continue to love. And I have a feeling this might be the same. I need to play it more. I want to play it. more. I wonder if it would but... be top ten. I mean, uh, probably top ten this year. I'm thinking. Is it game of the year? So far, no. No. So far, no. Kazuka. 
is still, I think, up there for me. Mm. I love Kazuka. I played. You have played a lot of that this month, but yeah, it's this has a lot of potential. I don't know where we fall with this one yet, but I loved it very, very much. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, that was it's in alpha mode right now on BGA. So I want more next station, whatever. So whatever they got going on, I want it. So for those of you who have fast forwarded it to the end of the video, just to get the top 10 rundown, my number 10 magic trick by Chris Ray. Number nine, bullet heart by level 99. Number eight, let's go to Japan. AEG. Number seven, hooky by Rio Grand Games. Number six, House of Fado, Eagle Griffin. Number five, Ready, Set, Bet, AEG. Number four, Mist Over Carcassonne, Hansem Gluck. Number three, Dorf Romantic, The Board Game from Pegasus. Number two, Encyclopedia of I, Holy Grail Games. Number one, and majorly number one. Majorly. Leaving everything else behind. Station Fall In the by Ion Games. The game design so hot, it's burning up in the atmosphere. Whoa. Oh. My number 10, Draft and Write Records from Inside Up Games. Number 9, Dorf Romantique, the board game from Pegasus Spiel. Number 8, Let's Go to Japan from AEG. From uh, number 7, City Trip Bruges from City Trip Games. Number 6, Caldera Park from Deep Print Games. Number 5, Clever Forever from Schmidt Spiel. Number 4, House of Fado from Eagle Griffin Games. Number 3, Encyclopedia from Holy Grail Games. Number two, Magic Trick from uh, designer Chris Ray. Uh, number one, Next Station Tokyo Blue Orange Games. I just want to say Next Station London because I'm just like, I'm so used to it. I mean, you're so good to it. 600 plays of that. This is like, I'm at like three plays of Next Station Tokyo. I mean, so, so you told that to someone, 600 plays, and they're like, 600 plays of Next Station London. It's maybe more, which is time. why we had the 100 by 100 uh challenge going on with our entire Twitch community. It's true. Um, and hey, if you're interested in something like that, join us on Twitch uh, at twitch.tv slash board gamer Steph on uh Sunday and Wednesday nights at 5 p.m. Central, where we play, teach, we do a full teach and full playthrough of three games a night, yep. unless we're doing a top 10 like tonight. So true. come join us and also join us on our sister channel, The Game Guildies, on Mondays at 6 p.m. Central. Yeah. No, where we talk about all things entertainment related uh, with a heavy focus on board games. So check us out there as well. Cool. It was fun. And I'm sure we'll have a lot more games in May because we have BGG Con. Yep. BGG Spring. And it's gonna be a really busy a bunch of games to learn. So I'm excited. Absolutely. It's going to be fun. going to be fun. All right, we will be back on Twitch momentarily.